Unreal Engine 4 released in 2014, and Unreal Engine 5 followed about eight years later in 2022. Now, only three years after the release of Unreal Engine 5, we're already talking about the possible release date for Unreal Engine 6, um, looking at 2027 to 2028. Uh, With that, there are a lot of concerns from the developer community as well as a lot of discussion around the possible features that this engine uh, upgrade could include. One thing I want to talk about is, uh, at least so far from what I've seen in the podcast and the discussion, uh, this seems to be more of an upgrade from 5 rather than an overhaul like 5 was to 4. Now, of course, When switching from four to five, it was still relatively straightforward to upgrade your project into the new version with the exception of any features that broke in between. Um, But um, there are a lot of concerns going around in regards to the fact that we're moving to six already. Um, It does feel a little fast that we're at the very least hearing about it. Um, And if you look at the timeline, right, um, going from 2014 to 2022, you know, that's roughly eight years versus uh, assuming that this releases, we'll say 2028, um, where that's looking at only like a six year timeline, that's a, well, not a massive difference in terms of release. That's still quite a jump. Um, and it feels like uh, for main developers that Unreal Engine 5 really hasn't had the time to mature um, as an engine and really get a lot of the issues with it shaken out. Um, So I wanted to kind of talk about this because um, I think that there's a lot of discussion going around about concerns about the engine, about some of the new features. Um, But to me, at least, a lot of the concern is in the wrong place. Um, Now, that's not to say that there aren't some valid concerns. Um, Definitely, especially with how fast they're talking about turning around and releasing this new uh, version engine. Now, of course, Unreal Engine releases new version engines. And if we're being honest, changing the name from five to six is more of a marketing Um, gimmick than anything Um, but I was looking through um, a few different articles as well as um, the podcast itself to kind of get an idea of what the plans are and most of the changes that they talked about um, I'm kind of on board with uh, in terms of you know a lot of it's hopefully going to help with the shader stutters uh, more cross platform uh, portability Um, The big thing I was excited for is there was some discussion about multi-threading. Now, what that's going to look like, we have no idea. Um, For all we know, that could be something relatively straightforward that happens on the back end that developers never need to worry about, or it could be something that still requires a lot of developer input. Because previously, you could multi-thread Unreal Engine, um, but it required a lot of um, work from the developer to do. If they can make that more seamless, less effort from the developers, that would definitely always be welcome especially if it was really performant. Um, it doesn't have to be as good as, you know, us making our own multi-threading setup, but if it's close enough, you know, that saves you a lot of time and effort um, and debugging. Um, my biggest concern looking through all this and something I'm not seeing people talk about that much is sort of the direct connection to Unreal Engine for Fortnite, the UEFN. Um, it's talked about in a few places and they talk about like Verse coming more strongly in Unreal Engine 6. Um, But something that was a little concerning to me, at least as a developer, is from reading a few of these articles, it seems like uh, they're trying to tie Unreal Engine more closely with Fortnite, which I get to an extent because they want to make it easier for people developing content for Fortnite um, to release their stuff. Um, But it sounds like they're also trying to make it very easy for you to deploy an entire game to Fortnite, which I don't think makes sense for... um, I wouldn't say most developers, but I don't think it makes sense for a lot of developers. I I can't speak for everybody, um, but at least in my game, with how much of my game is focused on physics um, and and the way my game is set up, there's a lot of custom stuff going on. So I don't see a benefit to releasing on Fortnite. Now that might be just a lack of understanding of what they mean when they talk about releasing on Fortnite. I don't know if this is something where it's like, you know, they talk about being world. Is that something where like they jump to the world, but it's your complete game? I I don't know. There's not enough information. It's still pretty early on um, as to what that truly means. Hey, you guys. Editing Space Marine here. I just want to give a quick shout out to all my channel members seen here um, and everyone who subscribes to this channel. It's been a quite a wild time of growth over the last few months, um, and I look forward to the next few months as we continue on. Um, If you haven't already, definitely subscribe. Um, 
just thank you for being here and thank you for supporting everything I do. Let's take a brief look at um, some of the stuff that they have talked about that I am excited about. Um, for example, the parallel execution and core source system refactoring. Basically, this is the, you know the multi-threading as well as uh, I believe they're doing some changes to memory pools and things um, to make everything just that much smoother and everything run a little bit better, which I'm definitely excited for. I think that this is going to be if it's done well and if the multi-threading um, really hits the ground running, uh, this is going to be something that will help Unreal Engine gain back a lot of the trust that's been lost in the community in terms of optimization. Because the problem right now in Unreal Engine is not that it's an unoptimized engine, it's that all of the optimization efforts are more on the shoulders of developers than it was with UE4. With UE4, um, especially with um, the previous version that a lot of GPUs used of their drivers, um, a lot of shaders and things were done at um, when you were compiling the game and you were getting ready to ship it. Um, but with newer versions of GPUs and stuff, a lot, and that's the thing I think people misunderstand, is the shader stuttering isn't a, an exclusive to Unreal Engine problem. Um, this is something that's going to be hitting all game engines, all games going forward because of the change of how uh, real-time shaders are being handled. Now, the benefit to that is that shaders and things like that are more specific. There's less generic, so they're going to be a little bit less overhead. Um, and long-term, I think it's going to be better for performance, but because there was so much lack of understanding about how shaders load in and things like that and how to handle um, creating shader caches and things like that, it led to an issue where developers didn't know what to do to fix the problem and so people playing the games just assumed it was an Unreal Engine problem. Um, and so this, this led to this disparity of all games that are Unreal Engine being labeled as unoptimized buggy and stuttering messes. Um, I'm hoping that this will change that a little bit, but I also am aware that, you know, that's something that's going to take a lot of real time from effort, uh, uh, from, sorry, from Epic um, to truly get that um, sort of vibe away. Um, even even you know people who don't really pay attention to this kind of stuff have gotten that vibe of like Unreal Engine games are going to look great and be big, but they're going to probably have some issues um, running on things that um, are you know any weaker than a supercomputer. Um, but yeah, and then as far as the uh, cross-platform stuff, um, currently they support a lot of different platforms, but I believe the the big discussion here. Uh, was just sort of simplifying a lot of the deployment workflows and how they actually get things out. My hope is that we might see some changes to the packaging uh, system. Um, hopefully some things to make things a little bit easier for people. Now, of course, we want to still leave the um, full advanced settings available. My hope would be at least they'd leave the full advanced settings open to people who understand what they're doing. Um, but hopefully they can make it so that um, you can do things a little bit easier if you so choose. Um, and making things a little bit faster in terms of actually packaging your projects. So you don't have to wait, you know, a couple of hours to package large projects. Um, uh, and then they talked about, you know, of course, like I said, the shader stuff, uh, real-time rendering enhancements. This stuff, I'm still a little interested in seeing what they're actually going to do. Because um, they've talked about, you know, doing some uh, more culling and tile-based processing to help with draw call overhead. Um, this is great for... Um, certain tasks and things. I think if I'm understanding them correctly though, this might also actually help with Nanite. Nanite normally doesn't care that much about um, draw calls to an extent, um, but I believe that the overdraw that happens from having multiple um, layers of materials, um, this might actually help with that as well because it'll sort of uh, reduce how much of that overhead is affecting um, Nanite, at least from my um understanding from from listening to talk of course uh just to reiterate all of this is still way far out so all of this could change or i could be wrong about any of this this is just my interpretation from listening to them talk and reading a couple of these um, articles now as far as the scalable simulation ai framework this is also one i am excited about in terms of the scalable scalable simulation um, one of the hardest things with physics right now is that um while they are spread out over uh, multiple portions of the thread, um, they still take a lot of performance to do um, large scale physics interactions. By having a more distributed um, model that's spaced out over hopefully uh, multiple threads, 
Um, so long as it's handled well by the engine, I think this could be really exciting for um, larger games with more simulation focus. Um, for example, my game, you know, that's something that could take a lot of benefit from something like this. Um, but we'll see, there's still a lot going on. Um, the AI framework stuff is pretty cool as well, because of course I always love seeing new behavior trees, um, extending those things, improving MPC performance, that's all really cool. But a lot of this, I felt, at least from the talk, um, didn't feel really fleshed out, felt more of like, oh yeah, we're gonna be upgrading this, but not necessarily too much on the specifics of, of what actually is changing. Uh, the extensibility integration tools, um, this one I think is, is not necessarily that useful for um, small time indie, but for the sort of medium teams um, or anything that's, you know, um, starting to do continuous integration. So, you know, double A teams, this is gonna be super duper great for them. Um, of course, some indie, indies will be able to take advantage of that, of course, um, but uh, your average indie developer, I don't think is gonna see too much benefit from this, too much change. Um, unless any of this makes its way into the actual interface itself, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, that is most of the stuff they talk about. Now, of course, this is still, um, we're looking at two, maybe three years out. Um, so there's still a lot of things that could change and happen. I think that um, it's exciting to know that they are thinking about performance issues. Um, and I'm hoping that this rebrand to Unreal Engine 6 is just because they know that those fixes in and of themselves are not going to be a great marketing tool. And so maybe they're using Unreal Engine 6 as a way to market, hey, you know, we're bringing to the engine. And by the way, here are all these great optimization fixes, a, a sort of two birds, one stone um, approach. But we'll see. Um, once they actually release it, uh, that's when we'll be able to get our hands on it and actually know what that looks like. Of course, without knowing um, yet there's not any technical previews yet out. Um, so there's no way to know for sure, you know, all the stuff they could just be saying and none of it actually means anything yet. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, that's it for today. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below, but otherwise, good luck and good hunting.